Hey everybody, this is Jason McCann with Mountain Tactical. In our last episode, we went into the minute details of the Tika T3X rifle stock. And if you've been following along with our series, we've gone over the model offerings, we've gone over the bolt, we've gone over the stock. Now, we're going to do a deep dive into the trigger. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So Sako and Tika triggers have a reputation of being some of the finest triggers from a factory in the rifle market. And a lot of that comes down to just the simplicity of the trigger system. So let's take a deep dive into this. So one of the nice things about uh, Tika and Sako triggers, and this goes all the way back to, you know, over my shoulder here, we have these, that 60s Sako BR action. The trigger mechanism is still pretty much the same on this modern Tika T3X. It is enclosed in an aluminum housing, which is great for keeping dust, grime, everything, you know, just kind of the muck out of your trigger mechanism. So it is 100% reliable in the field. You have your safety lever here. You have your M6 a bolt that holds it into the action. Very important, you have your mag retention spring. If you ever have an issue with your rifle where the back of the mag is dropping, either you've lost your mag retention spring or it is worn out. This is a critical component to making the Sporter mags work or the factory T3X mags work. A lot of people will convert a Tika CTR into a hunter style stock, not realize that this is missing on their CTR and then give us a call because your magazines aren't loading correctly. And you're missing this piece right here. You have your trigger weight adjustment screw right here. The trigger adjusts from a two pound to a seven pound pull weight. We have our safety lever that operates uh, a plunger and I'm gonna go and pull the chamber flag out of here. We know this is clear safe. When the bolt is in battery and you put your safety on, the bolt actually locks shut. This is really handy in a hunting rifle where you might have a round in the chamber, you might slip. I mean, we're constantly hunting in the snow and in the mountains and uh, you slip and fall. This keeps the rifle in a safe condition even with that fall. So let's take a look at adjusting the trigger. All right, to adjust your trigger, you just need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. Lefty loosely, righty tighty. So to reduce the weight of the trigger, unscrew this set screw, and you can screw it out to where it's gonna stop on this bolt, and that's gonna give you roughly a two pound trigger pull. Conversely, if you want a heavier trigger pull, you can turn this adjustment screw to the right, and your trigger weight is going to increase accordingly. So, let's go ahead and take our trigger pack off the rifle and take a closer look at what's going on inside of here. All right, so to remove the trigger, I'm just gonna remove the bolt, set that to the side, need a five millimeter Allen key. And it's torqued on at the factory, so little snug. Loosen this, now when you pull your five millimeter bolt out, this is where you might accidentally lose your mag retention spring. Don't lose this. We do sell them on our store if for some reason you uh, misplace this or you lose it, it happens. I wouldn't believe how many springs are under my workbench in my garage. And then, you just lift this out of the action and we'll set our barreled action to the side, get in here and take a look at the bits and pieces that make up your trigger pack. Okay, so we look at the components of that make up the trigger. We have our trigger shoe, that's where your finger goes. We have our trigger safety bar, and our trigger safety bar operates the plunger here. So when you put the rifle on safe, you can see the plunger that interacts with the bolt. There's the port that that goes into and locks the bolt shut. You have a better look at our uh, trigger weight adjustment. We flip it over on the other side. 
we can actually see our sear. Now this is where all the magic happens on the trigger. So when you close your bolt, it interacts with your sear notch. Take this off a uh, safe. This interacts with your sear notch. So when you close your bolt, that sear is holding all that firing pin tension until you pull the trigger and it releases, sends that firing pin forward. Very important component right there. So another thing to point out on the sear is you can see that this is actually perpendicular to the line of travel of the firing pin. Now there are some rifles on the market that have a reputation of randomly going off. And the reason why they randomly go off is because they have an angled sear so that you have, I mean, I don't know, I guess a cleaner trigger pull, but it is not as safe. You don't have that perfect perpendicular stop holding that firing pin back. There's always that angular force that could be overcome and then your firing pin's gonna fall when you don't want it to. People have died um, with those types of rifles and yeah, so it's just something that just another feather in Tika's cap at keeping this incredibly safe and having a high quality trigger. So from this side of the trigger pack, you can see this bar, which is actually attached to your safety lever, and that bar actually raises your plunger up. Also, this bar creates a physical stop that absolutely locks this sear and the trigger mechanism so you have a physical barricade that keeps this rifle safe so even if I accidentally pull uh, this trigger it's not going to go anywhere it is mechanically locked so let's see I'm going to try to simulate uh, what your firing pin sees so you're going to have a massive amount of spring pressure on this sear and when you pull that trigger you can see how that sear falls away and that's what allows that firing pin to spring forward and strike the primer. And then, obviously, when the safety's on, you have that mechanical blockage. I mean, nothing I do can make that uh, sear drop. So, just an incredibly simple and very safe mechanism uh, on these triggers. All right, while we have the trigger out of the rifle, let's take our trigger adjustment weight plunger out. So, I'm going to take this, and you can kind of see what this mechanism looks like. So what keeps that trigger in position is spring pressure. And we take that set screw out, you can see a little bit of blue Loctite on there, we give this a little tap, you can see the spring and plunger, I'm going to go ahead and separate them here. So that plunger actually pushes against the trigger uh, housing up above. You can see this is where your trigger pivots. This is touching your trigger right here, and that's putting that spring pressure on that trigger, holding it in place. And so when you pull that trigger, you're not only overcoming the friction of the sear engaging the firing pin, but you're also overcoming this spring. So when you're installing our spring kit, so you have a lighter trigger pull, all you're doing is replacing this spring right here. And then you need to make sure that when you reassemble everything, this plunger is pointed in the right direction. And see there's a long rounded end that touches the trigger shoe. And then there's kind of a flat end, and that's just more of a guide for the spring. So we can kind of slip those together. And that's what that looks like inside the trigger pack. And then we can just slip that right back in there, put our set screw back in, and then when we put the rifle back together, we can adjust this trigger pull to your personal preference. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the deep dive into the Tika T3X trigger system. Next week, we're gonna go into the barrel. We're actually gonna crack this barrel off the action and do a deep dive into what makes Tika and Sako barrels so special. So, until the next episode, go get some trigger time.